Today on Tree Talk, we are discussing black locust, Robinia pseudoacacia. Uh, black locust is a, a common tree, a very fast growing tree. Um, I plant a lot of these trees because they're so fast growing and very adaptable to different environments. Let's we'll start with the identification. Uh, first of all, the uh, bark really stands out to me. Uh, it's very ropey to me uh, as it develops, and this is a, a pretty large one. Again, these, you know, these trees are uh, very fast growing. They don't live very long. Um, this one's on the bigger side. Um, it looks to me like there's fibers. It's a very kind of fibrous, you know, ropey looking bark. That's just the best way to describe it to me. Like if you take a big cotton rope and kind of squish it flat. Um, uh, the leaves are distinctive too. Uh, it has compound leaves. So, you know, with uh, talked about this before on Tree Talk, but um, any leaf will have a bud associated with it. These ones are kind of hard to see, these sessile little buds. Um, uh, but so every one of these little guys is a leaflet. Uh, and this entire thing is a leaf, so that is a compound leaf. Um, they are alternate, meaning that the leaves are not not coming out, you know, at the same node, um, one uh, leaf per node, uh, and they have very rounded leaves, or leaflets, I should say, um, whereas some of our other compound leaves uh, have serrated leaf margins. Um, they're, they're maybe longer, uh, they maybe have more narrow leaflets, so this really does stand out amongst the all the trees that do have uh, compound leaves like this. Um, additionally, uh, so it has these really beautiful, big, fragrant flowers. I actually, in the springtime, uh, probably mid-May or so is when it's usually blooming, I will smell this tree before I see it, actually. Uh, uh, those develop into these uh, beans, bean pods. So uh, the seeds, this is a legume. Um, there we go. So it's in Fabaceae, uh, and it is a nitrogen fixer like other legumes. So it uh, has these uh, these pods that are kind of hard to uh, mix up. It kind of looks to me like a red bud. A red bud has a similar uh, seed pod, but red bud does not have leaves that look anything like this. Um, additionally, something that really stands out, couldn't come, uh, couldn't find a good specimen here on these more mature uh, trees, but um, the uh, thorns on black locust are very distinctive. Um, they are paired. They come kind of ranking along the side, so make sure I get a, uh, find a picture of, of that that I have somewhere in the archives uh, to show you what I'm talking about there. They have uh, very stout thorns, uh, very triangular stout thorns that are kind of ranked, you know, so they're sort of stacked along the side of the branch. Um, as far as the habitat and the natural history of this tree, um, I already mentioned a couple times, very fast growing and short living tree. Um, it will grow, it is a, a quick pioneer of disturbance sites. So if we have an opening in the tree canopy, there's a lot of light, uh, maybe a fire moved through, or maybe there was some earth disturbance, or there was some logging, or it's someone's backyard or something like that. This is, that's where this tree is going to be found most often in the disturbance areas. Um, it's going to grow very, very fast because it is a nitrogen fixer. It can fertilize itself basically, uh, you know, using the soil and the air nitrogen. So, um, they can grow, uh, in usually xeric sites, mesic sites. I don't see them often in wet sites. That's really the only place that I don't really see them too frequently is, is, you know, moderately wet or wetter areas. Um, as far as benefits of this tree, uh, I mentioned those big flowers. They are very prized by insects, really important nectar source for insects uh, in th at that point in the summer or in the growing season, I should say. It's kind of late spring uh, because most of our herbaceous plants have not bloomed yet. So all of our pollinators are really relying on woody species like black locust and, and other trees and shrubs uh, for those nectar resources at that time of the year. Um, also great uh, birds will eat these seeds um, and uh, of course everything will eat, uh, almost everything will eat the insects that are uh, foraging on the leaf tissue and on those flowers. Um, as far as human uses, uh, a lot of people don't like this tree because it's very weedy. Because it's adapted to disturbance areas, and because it's a nitrogen fixer and it grows fast and it spreads really fast, people don't like it. People consider it a weed, some people consider it invasive. Well, it is native to the eastern U.S., um, and I have not seen it to pose a problem to other trees regenerating underneath it. Um, it won't shade them out. It has, uh, the shade is not very dense on a black locust. Um, so it's actually a little bit of a, a way to, 
to get good for a succession. Um, if, say, an acorn was planted by a squirrel right underneath this tree, um, eh, the oak would probably, you know, it wouldn't grow as fast as it would in the full sun, but it would be sheltered by this tree, uh, especially if there was a bunch of little uh, locust saplings uh, with those thorns on them, maybe sheltering it a little bit from deer, the oak would be able to grow up underneath it. Um, and then when these trees kind of peter out, they usually only live about 75 years or so, um, now we have a lot of light uh, for those other species uh, coming up underneath it. Um, so I don't think it's a bad thing to have. Uh, uh, you know, again, it's weedy, it's aggressively uh, spreading, um, but that's a good thing when it's a native plant with a lot of benefits. Uh, the wood is actually very useful. It's a super rot resistant wood. Um, and so uh, fence posts are made out of this uh, tree. And because it grows so fast, you can actually make a, have a tree that is the perfect size for a fence post pretty quickly. Um, within, you know, I don't know, 10, 15 years or so, you have a tree big enough to cut down uh, and use for a couple different fence posts. And so um, uh, that is a, a common use of it. Um, uh, not super prized uh, for, for lumber other than that it's rot resistance, but um, that's a good enough niche that we, we definitely need species that can do that. Uh, maybe one final thing on the wood, I learned this recently, uh, it fluoresces under a black light, uh, under UV light, so that's pretty cool. It has a, if you take a stick uh, or a branch and, and start to cut into the wood, uh, it has this, uh, this kind of yellow green, this like R.L. Stein, you know, slime green color um, that it fluoresces. So that's really cool uh, that I've never seen anyone use that before, but um, if I, you know, ever do some woodworking and I have the opportunity to do so with this species, I'll, I'll give that a shot. Something that I can, you know, put a black light on maybe, uh, just using my imagination. But there you have it, black locust. I really love this tree, uh, grows very fast. I plant a lot of these trees every single year uh, because they're really, really good to have in our environment.